put your quality questions in the chats because I know there's going to be a lot of them tonight because I have a feeling this group has some people opportunities in their business. So guys, without further ado, you don't have to wait any longer because 10X Owners Live starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome. Hey, welcome to another episode of 10X Owners Live. We are here to help business owners scale and grow. Last year I made $300,000. And what did I tell you you're gonna do this year? One million eight. You can't speak highly enough about them. I love what you're saying, by the way. I've been taking some notes. This is a great call tonight. Brandon, what makes you qualified to be hosting a show called 10X Owners Live on a Tuesday night and full of business owners? I've been building and selling businesses for the past 25 years. As one of the youngest people to ever ring the opening bell, the American Stock Exchange, and then selling my last business for $151 million, 77 times EBITDA, to a billion dollar company. I've partnered with Grant Cardone. I love Brandon, big hand, big hand for Brandon. And we've created a business in 36 months using the exact principles we teach. And every Tuesday night, the Cardone Ventures team comes on here to 10X Owners Live to help you. Grab your pen, paper, and get ready to take notes. This is your night, your chance to ask quality questions, to 10x your business, to achieve your personal, professional, and financial goals. It's time to 10x. This is 10x Owners Live. Advantage. It is time to 10x. Guys, welcome to Owners Live. I am your host tonight. My name is Natalie Dawson, and I cannot wait to talk about all things people, all things onboarding. We're going to go through some onboarding things today on this owner's live call. I would love to have you put in the chat where you are joining this live show from tonight. I will tell you I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm so pumped to be here in Scottsdale, Arizona, by the way. I love Scottsdale. Let's see. We got Toronto in the house, Miami, Philly, Arizona, Miami, Colorado. Oh, they're coming in hot. Gulf Breeze. Salt Lake City, Orlando, Tempe, Palm Beach, Florida, Albu Albuquerque. I think I got that right. Albuquerque. I have a hard time saying ours every once in a while, but I, I nailed it. Uh, India. Wow, India. That's so cool. Austin, Indiana. Not to be confused with India. Slightly different time zones. Uh, Chicago, San Jose, North Carolina, Pompton, Philippines. Guys, welcome to the show. We do the show every single Tuesday night because we are here on a mission to help business owners around the world 10X their businesses. And we wanna provide you with the tools and the knowledge and the information and the insights that you need in order to do exactly that. My husband and I, Brandon, who you just probably saw on that trailer, which like the trailer still gets me all sorts of jazzed. I think that thing is so cool because it really gives you this picture of what we've been up to for the last 36 months. And that trailer kind of goes into we're, our, our real mission, which is to help people impact their personal, professional, and financial lives through the growth of their businesses. And we have these cool events. How many of you guys have been to an event? Put a 10X in the chat if you have been to an event hosted by Cardone Ventures or the 10X crew. Look at that. Wow, that's amazing. Now, I would love to have anybody who has never met us in person, who's never been to an event. Let's see, what could you put in there? It's not 1X, like that's not the right thing. Maybe it's um, not yet. Put a not yet in the chat. If you haven't been to an event in person, not yet. Kim, can't wait to meet you. Maria, Ann, Travis. Okay, guys, we'd love to meet you in person. We are real in person. Like we actually like, you know, we have like physical bodies. We do silly things. We say funny stuff. Fun fact about this show tonight on my right, I have some Quest tortilla chips that I was just like downing before the show. Like we're real people. Is anybody eating their dinner currently on the show right now? Is this like dinner time? I see Gus, Gus and Ashley, normally they're cooking dinner. I see Michael eating the dinner. That sounds great. Um, nachos, oh my gosh, don't get me started with nachos. It is not National Taco Day. What? It's National Taco Day? Oh my gosh, I'm going, I'm heading straight to Chipotle after this. It's one of my favorite places to eat. Anyway, I digress. In this organization, one of the things that I have helped with over the past three years is creating 
our employee experience, crafting our onboarding process, our hiring process, and how we take people who don't know anything about our business and turn them into what we like to call 10X employees, which would be those people who really treat the business as if it's their own. And they do that in the best way possible. And not every employee around here is is 10X, that we don't have all 10X employees. I was actually just this past weekend at our business boot camp, and I was sharing with a business owner that when we first rolled out this platform called Cardone University, I had a lot of pushback from our team. We had about 14 team members at the time when we made this decision, and we dealt with people not completing their Cardone University and had to deal with selling them on why they needed to do Cardone University. And I think that that's like a little peek behind the curtain as to us not just hiring these people who are 10X. Granted, we do have so many 10X team members, but it's not like people just show up at our doorsteps and are like begging and pleading for jobs here who are just all things 10X. We deal with the exact same challenges that most businesses deal with, which is how do you take team members who don't have any context about your business and help them see what their life could look like inside of your business through aligning their goals with the business goals and being really clear about what the target is and what's necessary in order to get there. We're very honest with our team. We say, hey, this is if you're looking for work-life balance in this cycle of your life, if that's like the main thing right now, this might not be the place for you. Now, there are plenty of team members who have achieved this illustrious thing called work-life balance, myself included, like I believe I do have a great work-life balance, but my definition of work-life balance might be different than Ginger's definition of work-life balance or Roma's definition of work-life balance. And my work looks like 70 hours a week. And to me, I'm like totally balanced. I'm like, great, this is, I love my life. Things are doing great. I, I enjoy what I'm contributing to. And so I think there's there's just this myth that like we just hire these mythical creatures of team members, not creatures, probably shouldn't say that, are these, and then meanwhile, I have one of our team members like crawling around the studio like this. We, we have great 10X team members, but you know, they're just not always 10X when they show up. And so what is the process, you might be asking, to take somebody who doesn't know much about your business and doesn't have clarity on what your business goals are and how do you transform that relationship and give it the best shot possible for them to help your business move forward, to help your business grow, to help you not feel like you're just out there alone being the only person that's pushing on the business. I would like to ask a question. I bet I do have a lot of CV team members in the chat and I'm just looking at this now. Unicorns are definitely mythical, agreed. Mythical creatures, totally. Um, put in the chat, yes. If you feel like a majority of the time you're the sole person inside your organization that's pushing, actively pushing for the growth of your business. I see a lot of yeses. And guys, there's there's nothing there's nothing wrong with this. To me, this is like a moment of vulnerability and a moment of just acknowledging where you're at right now. Because the goal when you started your business likely wasn't that you felt like you were just alone in this journey and that you're the only person fighting for this business. And I can say that I I don't believe that you're trying to find people who care as much as you care. I don't believe that anybody will ever care about your business as much as you care. There's nobody who's going to care about our business as much as Brandon and myself care about our business. Like this thing is just, it's an extension of us. But I do believe that you can find people who desperately want to help you and who feel like they are advocate, who you feel like they are advocates for you and that they want to see you succeed. They want to see your clients succeed and they want to actively solve problems in your business. I believe those people are out there. I know those people are out there because we have lots of them. There's lots of them who are on this call. And so I'm going to peel back the curtain a little bit today and talk about the five things in our onboarding plan that are non-negotiables that we've also shared with business owners that have had a lot of success implementing this as well. So it's not just, oh, Cardo Ventures does this and they hire these mythical 10X employees. Like every, uh, every other business that we've worked with who really implements this process is shocked by how quickly their onboarding process transforms through including these five things. So team, it would be amazing if you could throw up the place where they can find 
the worksheet that I have in front of me. Oh, look at that right there. Everybody looks so happy in this photo. I'm pumped. I don't know what I'm looking at in this photo, but I'm really pumped. The guy next to me looks pretty happy. The other people don't look quite as happy as we look, but like there's something going on on that left side of that room that was just thrilling. I'm kind of confused by this photo actually, because I know I'm at the front of the room. So I, I don't know what we're looking at. Anyway, I digress. Um, guys, hit the QR code. It's been a long day. I've shot a lot of content today. Um, but we're gonna have fun on this 10X Owners Live because I love this topic. So hit the QR code. And then I also think we have it in the chat. Oh, there it is. If you wanna download the worksheet, click on the link, carnaventures.com forward slash worksheet. I like what the team did there. That's really straightforward for you to remember. Uh, all right, guys, you can probably take that down. So let's just get this thing started. First things first, five things every onboarding plan should have your company's mission, vision, and values. Onboarding plan has to be clear about this. Now we're a little freaky and we go through this process in the interview side before somebody's onboarded to ensure that a candidate knows what our mission, what our vision, what our core values are, even prior to getting hired. But if there's a chance through your interview process that somebody could have missed why you do what you do, where your business is going and what your core values are, it has to be included in the onboarding plan. And um, this is a little peek into step number five, but I would also recommend quizzing your team members on those three items because I sleep really well at night, like so well at night, even though we're growing like crazy and we have new team members like hanging off of the rafters. I sleep really well knowing that there are these like checkpoints in place in our business that ensure that people know what we're about. And people might not know everything. They don't know all of the things that I know that would perfectly help them be set up for success, but they know what they need to know. And one of the things that people in your team, regardless of the level that they're coming in at, they have to have clarity on why your business exists, where it's going and what your core values are. I was reading this book last week um, that was phenomenal. And it was on this topic of interviewing and then onboarding. And it was really emphasizing this concept that think of how much time you spend in the interview process. You're likely spending at least two interviews. Um, you've probably sourced or at least looked through 15 resumes, maybe 20 resumes. and the people that you're interviewing, let's say you interview five to eight candidates per role, like only one of them actually makes it into your business. Think about this. Only one of them makes it into the business. Now think about your onboarding process. Like properly assess how much time have you really spent honing in and crafting how you onboard people? Because you have 100% of the people in that process who are your team members, 100%. Like every single one of them, if they're at that point, they're onboarding with you, you hired them, they are moving forward in a representation of your brand. And so if you haven't really thought through this onboarding process and spent as much, if not more, I'm gonna challenge you with more, but like the bare minimum is as much. If you've not spent as much time thinking with and clarifying and crafting the onboarding process as you did to find the team member, your priorities and your ability to set your team member up for success is just flipped. Because again, that person is like 100% supposed to be on your team. You, you're not literally married to them, um, but you're like, you're committed. You've done the first date thing, you put the ring on it. Now you're like living life with this new person. And so why not set that relationship up for success. And I just loved how this book put it because it like really slapped me across the face, not literally, but like how books do, you know, uh, with this, this concept of, Hey, wait a second, how much time are you really spending looking at this onboarding plan? So your mission, vision values, that's like baseline that absolutely has to be in there. This next one, this is something that I can, can sometimes get challenged with. We have a lot of new entities that, um, have become partners of Cardo Ventures recently. And as we scale and grow, I feel like it's it's been really easy for us to figure out our own internal training. But when you go to duplicate this across other business units and other organizations, deducing down the most important thing 
has to be one person's responsibility. Like somebody inside your culture, which is number two, has to be responsible for determining what are the internal training resources that somebody needs to have access to, that somebody needs to be tested on in order for them to know everything that they need to know. I'll just give you like, I wish I had like videos of this from back in the day, but when Cardone Ventures had 15 to 50 team members, like I drafted every person's onboarding plan and I spent 30 to 40 minutes like going through and meticulously figuring out what what videos do they need to watch and in what order do they need to watch them and and based on their role what books should they be reading and the meetings that they're attending like why why would they attend this meeting versus that like I really thought with what is this first four weeks going to look like so that there weren't these missteps of people showing up to work getting handed a laptop and just not having any idea what's actually happening all around them and if you don't feel like your culture is intentional with the meetings and with the structure that you have that you'd be introducing somebody to, well, that's just a whole nother set of problems and it's probably for a whole nother owner's live call. But I would really just encourage you to be thinking with like, you should have this structure. Um, and if you don't have this structure, you should create this. Now I'm seeing the chat have two initials that are probably my favorite initials next to my initials um do do i have a friend and or a husband who has joined our 10x owners live call this evening maybe drum roll yo 10x owners live hi how are you so good to tile into this show and get to see my gorgeous wife i miss you i miss you too i like your 10x's thank you I'm wearing quite a few of them, actually. <laughs> How many 10Xs do you count? I count two. I'm sure there are more. Three. What are you? Do you have your slides on today, too? Okay, 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 okay. Let's just. Anyway. Do I see my 10X underwear? Nope. That's the, the, the crew's good. They're all no, good. I just want you to know I dialed in right about the time you said you put the ring on it and then you're kind of stuck with it. And I was thinking to myself, <laughs> I was thinking to myself, uh -oh. is she talking about her husband right now? Oh my gosh. No, I was talking about those team members that people submit offer letters to, and then they just neglect them and wonder why on earth is my business struggling? And why does nobody know what I'm thinking or know how to do what I want them to do? Brand, do you want to give a little of your insight into the importance of onboarding plans? Well, look, you know, um, I say it takes three people to build a business. Once you get up to 15 million, you need the leader, you need the manager, and you need the builder. And sometimes the leader and the builder are the same thing, but you definitely need the, man, the manager. So as we scale and grow and get bigger, I need someone like Natalie to make sure that people have their 30, 60, 90 day onboarding plans, to make sure they have their quarterly re PPF reviews to make sure they're doing them right, make sure they're doing them on time and making sure they're getting logged into the system, making sure the managers are managing two people's goals and not oppressing them just by shoving stuff down their throat. So so, so the deal is, is, is uh, two thirds of employees are disengaged or actively disengaged. The, the, the art and business is getting your employees actively engaged and you're not gonna do it by managing down through them. You're gonna have to do it by teaching them to manage up to you. And I think, I think this is a very important thing as, as we grow and scale and uh, almost 190 employees right now, you know, we've been gone. Natalie's home. She's at the corporate office. I'm in Las Vegas. Um, we were in the South of France for a couple of weeks. Um, and then coming from the South of France, we flew straight to San Diego where we had two different masterminds with over $4 billion worth of businesses. And then we flew directly back to Miami where we ran a three-day boot camp. And then we flew home from Miami and Sunday morning, the last day of boot camp, I'm obviously battling a little bit of a cold. I bit down on something and I snapped the root in my tooth. And so I had the beautiful opportunity to go in and get a root canal in between all this. Yay. Now, the re reason I bring this up is, 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 is everywhere we're going in our attack speed. And first of all, I've never taken two weeks off of my life to do anything. We didn't even take two weeks off to get married. We went and did our honeymoon and then did two days 
after the honeymoon, and then we went right back to a boot camp. I bring this up because we wouldn't have been able to do it if we didn't have 190 team members that we trust and that are being well uh, managed and, and inspired. And, and, and so we need the managers and we need the builders, we need the doers. And you're not gonna do it without a team. And the hardest part statistically, 97% of all businesses are trapped under $3 million of revenue with 12 employees. And, and of the 12 employees, <clears throat> probably four are relatives or friends. So you're not gonna be hard on them. And, and so you gotta get big. You gotta coordinate your team and get them working together, um, which means those onboarding plans are everything. Because if your employees go to work for you and they work 30 days and they're lost, you know, I have a saying, confusion creates failure. And if your employees are lost after the first, they'll give you, a pass for the first 30 days, you usually give them a pass because it's like, oh, it's new. Nobody knows what they're doing. They're trying to figure it out. And then the next 30 days, and you're like, no, they should be starting to do some things. And they're saying they should be showing me how to succeed a little better. And by the 90th day, if you ain't doing something to actively engage and show your people how to succeed, they're going to be checking out and just taking advantage of the payroll because they figure you're not paying attention anyway. And then you become a victim of your employees. This is all stuff Natalie teaches in the in the people essentials. Brennan, you want to tell more about people essentials? I haven't talked about this yet. <clears throat> it's effectively, you know, we don't teach anything we're not actively doing. This is the, you don't start a business. You know, we started our business 38 or 39 months ago, and there was three of us. Um, and, and today we're at 190. And, and if you annualize last month's revenues, you know, we're a $120 million company. In, in 36 months annualized. So, so, you know, we had a goal within the 60th month. So in the fifth year to be a hundred million, we'll actually across our, our, our Cardo Ventures businesses, we'll, we'll be at a hundred million in our fourth year. And, and I bring that up because, because you can't grow that fast. I can't even imagine what, what our, like Natalie and I wouldn't be able to go do all the boot camps the events that we do with people essentials and with finance essentials and with all our essentials program, where we take exactly what we do, exactly how we help businesses, exactly what Natalie for the people equation has built for our organization to grow and scale, what the technology people have built to come alongside that to manage it all in volume, our hiring tools, our people, human tools, our employee maturity models, our compensation structures, our incentive programs, all that stuff that we deploy every single day in our business. We work with the businesses we manage, which is over a billion too now. We teach it. Everyone can come learn how we do it and how to do it with the hopes that we can help businesses get to a million dollars so they can come to our 10X 360, which I believe we have one next weekend. Yeah, so we have a 10X 360. We have a 10X 360 on Thursday, Friday, and then we have our People Essentials workshop on Saturday and Sunday in Scottsdale, Arizona next week. Perfect, so I can't remember days and times. So that's not this week, that's next week. And You're right. And, 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 and then I think we go to Miami and do it again. That's, That's right. right. Uh, um, so, so look, we got a lot of people on here that have been working with us. I see all the names I went through before I was talking and I saw who's, who's on here. You know, success leaves clues and people looking for clues find success. And, and that's why we do this program. So, you know, Natalie, I actually, as you know, I have a dinner in 30 minutes. It's going to take me, I just looked, it takes me 25 minutes to get there. Oh. And so I promise to do right. a good job representing you at this dinner and then Thank i have a you. meeting after the dinner at nine o'clock and i promise to do a good job representing you with that and then i get on an airplane in the morning and we fly to arkansas for a day to meet 16 vips with uh, this new all this noise i don't know maybe some people have seen but i know 15.8 million people have commented almost 16 million people have commented on the latest podcast and news that Dana White, the president, co-founder of the UFC, has been talking almost exclusively about 10X Health 
Grant Cardone, 10 X and what we're doing with him. And I can't wait over the next couple months for the perpetual news to come out of all the things we're doing at 10 X and 10 X health. Remember, I told you guys that have been listening to me that we started Cardone ventures as a holding company. So I could build a team to hundred million in revenue with 200 experts that then we can work with people like you guys to grow your business and partner with. And then we're going to spin off a whole bunch of companies in different industries. And, and, and we're doing it in HVAC. We're doing it in wealth, uh, uh, financial services, wealth management. We're doing it in insurance. We're doing it in our business advisor. We're doing it in, in, in dentist. We're doing it. I already did it and doing it in chiropractic. We're doing it in the health business now as well. And, and so I want you to think about that. I want you to pay attention. And if this is your first meeting, I want you to understand we had no revenue, no business 40 months, 40 months ago. And now 10 X health has Dana white stumping for it. And, and a whole bunch of other people because of the impact it's made. And it's already a business that annualized will be 50 million, seven to 65, 70 million next year. And that business was a quarter of a million dollars in revenue in September of last year. So we have multiple businesses popping. And, I, and, 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 and what we're doing is teaching you guys how to build connected businesses in your business when you go to the 10X 360 so that you can learn. We got plumbing, we've got electrical, we've got HVAC, we've got roofing, we've got homes, a whole series of home services and, 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 and 10 different verticals popping right now. And so if you're watching this, you're like, how do they build a company and then spin off all these companies and then build multi hundred million dollar companies? It's a strategy. And we teach it at the 10X 360. And then we, then we teach all the underlying components with people, with finance, with, with, with leadership, with marketing, with sales, with stages. So you learn to present yourself, pitch and present your, your, your value proposition with authority. And, and, and this is what we're building. And for those of you that have not worked with you, put, put first time, if this is your first 10X 360, put, put first time, I'm just, or I'm sorry, 10X Owners Live, just put first time. I just wanna see how many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so look, you know, we love it when we have first timers, man, because you get to see what's happening here, but there's a lot of people that have been on this program we launched this the first week COVID happened. And, and, and we've tens of thousands of people that have come through this program and, and we're working with, with thousands of them. I just hope an opportunity, I hope that an opportunity presents itself if this is your first time where we get to meet you in person at one of our events. And, 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 that tr and trust me, you're gonna be in great hands. Natalie, I know you are just gonna, you're such a rock star. I miss you, baby. I, I, not very many nights I'm away from you. So sad, but I know you're going to represent so well and can't wait to hear all about it. Okay. Thank you. It was great seeing everybody. I'll see you guys okay, later. Okay. Bye, Brandon. He's the best. Oh, he's still on. No, he's not. Now I can talk about him. No, but really he is the best. He's like freaking rock star. Who has a root canal and just like, is like that the next day? He was like that 15 minutes later. It's, it's wild. It's very challenging keeping up with this man. I will I will tell you that because who doesn't need to go to sleep after a root canal? I would definitely need to go to sleep. But one of the things Brandon was discussing is our People Essentials Workshop. And we have one of these. It's the final one of 2022. And we don't have any currently on the books for 2023. So if you have been putting off coming to a People Essentials or if you are just like, man, this is the thing that I know I need to focus on in 2023 in order to scale my business, in order to find the right people, in order to fix my culture issues, in order to figure out how to get rid of some of the drainer employees that we might have, whatever situation you might find yourself in with your business as it relates to the people component, we have a People Essentials coming up next weekend, Saturday, Sunday, uh, at this particular event, we're going to be going through, as it says here, the alignment, the development, and the transition of key employees. And on this 10X Owners Live call, we are offering this program for $4,997. You can hit the link. Let me just see what's happening in the chat here. 
um, scan the QR code uh, or one of our sales team members will reach out to you directly. So if you're interested and you want more information, just put in the chat, I'm interested and our sales team will get in contact with you. This event always sells out for us. This is one of our most coveted, largest rooms. It's very in demand. And because we're coming up on it next weekend, we want to make sure that our people who show up on Tuesday nights get access to be able to join. So definitely take advantage of this offer. I know our sales team is in the chat so that you can get your tickets. If you have somebody in your business that's an HR stakeholder, and maybe that person isn't you, like in our business, as Brandon was talking about, I don't remember the last time Brandon looked at an onboarding plan, to be honest with you. That is not Brandon's core responsibility inside Cardone Ventures. It's also not Grant Cardone's core responsibility. I don't think he's looked at an onboarding plan in quite some time. But if there's somebody inside your business that should be reviewing onboarding plans, that should have a documented process for recruiting, that maybe they don't have clarity on annual performance reviews that are coming up and need a better mechanism to be able to really give employee feedback and coaching to take your existing team to the next level, that person should come to the People Essentials because it is perfectly set up to position your business through key stakeholders, either yourself or somebody who's responsible for these things in order to get the information you need in order to lead your people. Okay, who's ready for number three? The third thing that your onboarding has to state is the goals and expectations. What are the goals and expectations for this role? Now, I have a handy dandy little trick. My trick to hold myself accountable to actually creating goals and expectations is by putting a policy in place. And this is how some of these concepts tie together. If I have a policy in place that says every person in the organization has an incentive plan, which is a policy, that means that before we hire somebody, I have to know how we're gonna incentivize this role so that everybody can have an incentive plan. So instead of people coming on board, and I've watched every type of business owner go through this, they hire employees, the employees come on board, the employees promise that they can bring all this value, they can add all this revenue, they can do all of these amazing things in the interview process, none of it's documented, there's no incentive plan that's fully confirmed. Employee joins the organization, and two months in, it's still unclear the employee's still not being committal about what they can actually drive to your business. And then you've spent eight months, 12 months, 18 months without that clarity. So having a section in your onboarding plan that lists goals and expectations forces you to commit on the front end. What does success look like for this role? What does it look like? Because if you can't articulate what success looks like, I'm a, I'm a promise you something right now. In the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of employees, it's probably at the thousands, including our clients, employees that we've hired, that I've hired, I have never once seen an individual have greater output than what was the initial expectation of the role. Think about that. Have you ever hired somebody where you expected something and the person that you put in the role expected something either documented or not, they so overperformed from those goals and expectations. Has that ever happened to you? If that has, um, maybe go try to find a sibling of theirs or invest in cloning technology because I would be amazed by that. Because it's rare that somebody is just going to blow your mind and go over whatever the expectation is. Because remember, I started this call by saying, a lot of you expect that your team members are actually gonna act as if they're the business owner and they're gonna take on this responsibility as like, I'm an owner. And in some cases, like not in some cases, in every case, a team member can help you get to your goals, but they are never going to take on the persona of just, well, you, they're, not, they're never gonna be you in your business. And so this idea that they're gonna like overperform from goals and expectations, I've yet to see it happen. Now people will, impress me. But when I really think of when somebody's coming on board of like what the true goal and expectation is, it's never below what that person is actually able to contribute to. So be clear about what you're setting the bar at and then allow people potentially to overperform to that. But don't just hope or wish or dream or have fantasies about them just blowing your mind when you weren't clear on the front end. Okay, number four, we're going through five and then I'm gonna open it up for some questions. So 
for any of you question askers, I would start the process of raising your virtual hand now so our team can start to put together the lineup for tonight. Number four, contact information for all department heads. Even though the form says vol, it is actually all. Contact information. It's critical. Sounds basic. It's critical. People need to know who to talk to and what those people's roles are. Uh, as I was mentioning, we have some different initiatives going on um, outside of just Cardo Ventures core business. And today I was on one of our executive team calls and we're rolling out this new Microsoft email address for this new entity. We are currently operating off of Google. And one of our team members said, okay, I'm gonna send you the list of everybody's names so that you'll have it to reference if you need to email these people. I'm like, that's great. I love having the names, but we also need an org chart because devoid of having a structure of how communication flows inside the business, like, like sure, the, the direct contact is important, but the contact with the context, think contact, context. These two things should be together. Contact and context allows you to say, oh, I would need to reach out to their controller, who is this person, versus their CFO, who is this person, because this is a different type of data that I need. If you do not give your team members clarity about who does what, and if you don't have an org chart and you don't have contact information, this is like, again, the baseline. This is the entry level stuff that you should be clarifying for your team members to set them up for success. If they don't know who to talk to, if they don't know who's on their team, if they don't understand how the organization is structured, you're gonna be the one that's that's actually challenged because you're gonna have to introduce them on their first days. You're gonna have to keep having the same conversations over and over. Oh, I forgot I never introduced you to Mandy. Oh, I forgot, yeah, this is what Derek does. Oh, you didn't meet Derek in your first week of onboarding. I'm sorry that it took three months to know who Derek is and what he does in this organization. That's silly, it's such a stupid waste of time. Don't do that. Okay, we're around in the corner here. Number five, everybody loves talking about employee handbooks. I know you guys were really excited. You were like, maybe she's not gonna bring up an employee handbook. Guys, I would never disappoint you like that. I will always bring up an employee handbook. We update our handbook all the time. I believe that there was a handbook update that went out today. I'm pretty sure there was one that went out last week. And then I think there was a, a handbook update that went out the week before because inside our handbook, has all of our policies. And if our team doesn't know about our policies or if something happens and we need to create a new policy, which if your business is growing, that should happen often. It's not a bad thing to update your handbook and policies. It's actually a good thing. It's showing growth. This handbook uh, is the core Bible of you as a business owner, you as a leader saying, hey, this is the rules of engagement here. And I caution people with handbooks um, because oftentimes you have somebody else prepare it for you. You have somebody else look at the compliance, which you should do. I'm very much in alignment with that. But then once you make it somebody else's responsibility, you don't then reclaim the responsibility for you to know what you're saying the rules are. And what this does is it puts just like, for lack of a better word, it puts shit in your team members' lines, um, in their communication lines and their expectations of the company. And it's not real if you aren't actually enforcing it. It's great to have a handbook that says that you're highly disciplined, but if the organization doesn't really act as if it's disciplined, then you're actually undermining all of the things that the organization puts out there. So if in one instance, you're okay with somebody not being disciplined, but in another instance, you're not okay with it, you're confusing them because you've already put out something that you're like, oh, I don't really hold people accountable to this anyway. I would much rather have you not have a handbook, like just scrap the whole handbook idea. Don't have one. Anybody in HR is probably like cringing right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm being real with you guys. I'd rather you not have one than have one that has a bunch of things like start time and your non-discrimination policy and all of those things that you don't actually mean uh, because it's setting the wrong precedence in your culture. I am a freak about what goes out into our organization. I review every single policy. I look through all of the documentation that we're asking people to read because it's setting the tone that it's important. And then if I know it's important because I've read it and I've reviewed it, it when somebody else doesn't think it's important, but I know it, it's like a reminder of like, hey, wait a second, this is important. These things that we put in front of you, it's not like every other organization that's just checking something off the box. This stuff allows you to be set up for success. 
And the way that we ensure this, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, you'll see on number five here, it says the employee handbook with this beautiful next section that says, and quiz, and quiz. I love quizzes. Quizzes are fantastic because instead of like putting your team members on the spot of like, do you know the mission statement of the organization or do you know what time we start, which feels a little aggressive, um, you can just ask somebody in a quiz so that they know that you're paying attention, first of all, but then you're also ensuring that they got the most important data. Now, with that, uh, I'm excited to open it up for questions. Uh, team, how do we want to do questions tonight? Just FYI, I hate choosing. So I would love somebody to tell me who we're picking on tonight. Let's go, Thomas. You were given a 10x. We're just, we're doing that. I can be bribed and a 10x is a great bribe. I, I love that. Thank you, Natalie. Um, I'm so glad that you're talking about this because this is exactly why I came on. It's kind of like a God ordained. Uh, I'm working for Jump Contact with Canadian Jose and Rebecca Kramer, and hmm. I'm designing their training and their onboarding for them. And one of the questions I have is, so Brandon and you talk about, you know, the team's values, making sure that they're in alignment with the value, like make sure that everyone's in alignment with it, but also making sure that the people, whatever their, their goals are, they're built into that. Like the, the, you guys talk about that when in the interviewing process, making sure that, you know, you can align their goals so that they have motivation. My question to you is when you're designing an onboarding, what are the key elements you want to have in that onboarding that addresses those uh, elements. And here's the reason why. So right now, a lot of our agents, it's like a glass ceiling. They answer their phones for people. That's what we do. We answer phones for other companies. And as we're scaling, we'll have other opportunities for them to go into it. But right now there's like a glass ceiling. It's either, you know, Jose and Rebecca, the owner, or you as an agent answering the phone. So I guess my question is, how do you build in that motivation with the values and with motivation and all the other stuff? I don't know if you understood that. Yeah, I think I, I think I do. Um, when it comes to our core values, they're outside. So we have the mechanism of the interview process, and this is all like, I go really deep into this and the people essentials for how I like to think of them as different containers, because what I find business owners and leaders do mistakenly is they think that core values solve this problem of motivation. And for me, core values is the wrong container to use for motivation. For me, in, in Cardone Ventures, we are using our personal, professional, and financial goal planning process as the container for motivation. So I wouldn't go back to like leaning in on our core value of inspiration if somebody's not feeling motivated, because me just saying that this environment is inspirational probably isn't going to make somebody more motivated when they're feeling lazy, they're not feeling like they have the self-confidence, whatever gets in their way from their goals. And so I'm actually going to use this container of PPFs. However, to, to tie into the core values piece, the interview process, we have them make the presentation about the core values and their alignment. And then I think our culture does a remarkable job of exemplifying our core values to where our team like spits out people who do not fit and are not in alignment with what we believe in. And your team like actually being the embodiment of that comes through all of these different processes. It comes through active leadership, somebody who's paying attention to, hey, somebody isn't acting in within alignment with discipline or a core value of accountability or transparency, or they're not getting results. And so it's like all of these different pieces together that create the opportunity for somebody to be motivated. And if somebody isn't feeling motivated, what are the backstops that we help provide them to like give them motivation, um, which would be in the form of PPFs, but also I think one of the most demotivating things that you can ever do to an A-plus player is put them around a B-minus team or a B team. Like I hated school projects growing up because I'm an A-plus player. I'm going to be the person that does all of the work, does it on time, does all of the details. And so I think it's a team dynamic that isn't just fixed with core values. There's like all of these other components, such as PPF, such as managing one-on-ones and ensuring that those one-on-ones are taking place such as a development plan for like active conversations such as r3 to ensure that coaching is happening with communication styles and that's not what the break is with that particular team member so i don't just think it's one thing and i wouldn't just use core values as the way to fix that uh, real quick as a follow-up question kind of tap into that so 
when it comes to professional development for these individuals, like I said, they're they're just agents, not just agents, they're really important agents. They're agents that answer phones. If they want to do something else, I mean, currently we don't have any training to do something else because there's no other roles yet. What would you recommend in regards to professional development to get them ready for that, that next role? Yeah, if they don't know what the next role is or you don't know what the next role is, it's going to be hard to come up with the training. Um, you can look at trends at large to see, okay, what types of roles could they uh, could they go into? And then it's kind of like a choose your own adventure in um you know, in our organization, we have it very clearly laid out. This has actually been an initiative that uh, has been a huge focus of mine and our HR team over the last couple of months is how do you identify in a business um, for a videographer, what the next role is for the controller, what the next role is for the accounting manager, what the next role is so that we can be really specific about what that training is devoid of you saying like, hey, if this is your goal and this is what we know would be the next step for you, and then here's all of the training that would be associated because we have visibility into what you would need to know in order to make that next movement. It's hard to just like slap training in front of somebody and actually have them do it and actually have them realize how it's going to tie out to their goals. So I would try to look at it like from a bigger picture and see options and then they can kind of choose their own adventure. I still think it's going to be a little challenging for them to get really concrete without saying, OK, this is the thing that I want to do and then building specific what we call employee maturity models off of that. You've been a great help. You are welcome. Um, if any of you guys are wondering like what all of these containers are, I've listed off in the last couple of minutes, five of them, but there are many, many more. And it's like this puzzle that once you have the consistency with understanding how to use these things, it really comes together. Highly, highly, highly recommend coming to my People Essentials next Saturday and Sunday. We also have a virtual option. The team just reminded me of this. If you cannot attend in person in Scottsdale, you can absolutely attend via the virtual option. And we're very active in the chats. And there's some behind the scenes Q&A that we do that's just specific to the virtual attendees. So the People Essentials is really diving into these containers, but then putting the map together and the way I like to look at people essentials is, okay, if you think that you have a employee uh, retention problem, like you're hiring a lot of people, but they're not staying, like what are the five core components, the containers that you need to implement in order to make that a holistic process? Because unfortunately, it's not just one thing. It's not just how do I retain better employees? It's all of these different pieces. It's this puzzle that you have to put together inside of your business and be consistent with and then duplicate with your leaders to be able to put um, put an answer to one of the, those questions. All right, team, who's next? DJ, the team is choosing you. DJ, come on down. It's not been too long since we saw each other last. I just saw you at the business boot camp. You gave the coolest shout out to my book, Teamwork. Thank you so much for that. I always appreciate you. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Good to see you too. My question is regarding one-on-one -on -one meetings. So when we do the one-on-ones, I know in the past you've mentioned if they don't um, take action on the one-on-ones, you don't have the meeting with them. But at like what point do you like call it? If they're hitting their KPIs, but they're not really taking the one-on-one -on -one serious, mm -hmm. how does that translate? And how do you, like, what do your one-on-one -on -one typically look like? To me, there's a different issue that would have to be taking place. There would have to be a level of disengagement. There are two things. It's either disengagement because the person isn't really clear with their goals and doesn't understand how the one-on-one -on -one could get them feedback to get them closer to their goals. Or the second thing could be they don't see how the leader in that organization can get them closer to those goals and why that time would be valuable because I've never had that issue where someone's like, I don't need a one-on-one -on -one with you. And in fact, I have the opposite challenge where I have team members who want more time in their one-on-ones, not less time. And so to me, if somebody didn't want to spend that time and they were just like, they're like, yeah, Natalie, I'm just, I'm doing my thing. I'm hitting my stuff and everything's all good. Uh, I would, I would really like reflectively look to say, okay, what am I not providing this person in the form of development, in the form of like, hey, these are your gaps. And sometimes these conversations have to be harder conversations before they get easier. Because it's like, if you don't want coaching and feedback, then we've got some challenges. Because I know that there are 10 things that I need to coach you on that are stopping you from being 
a six figure producer versus making $60,000 a year. And, and you're a little occluded to that right now. This uh, to be is in my lower level positions. So like my management and uh, like lead technicians and stuff like that, they're fully engaged, but the, the lower level techs just, I don't know if they're getting it or not. So I mm -hmm. definitely understand what you're saying with on that. And I take full responsibility on a leadership role to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Mm -hmm. I was just seeing if there's any advice that you might have in that coaching aspect with them that I could maybe incur more engagement from them. I would lean on the PPF side and really like clarifying the financial goals. Cause if they're not making what they want to make, it's a really clear, it's like, Hey, wait a second. If, if I'm making more money than you and I'm, especially if I'm making way more money than you, or if I have a, a part of my life that you're wanting and you would be interested in also having, it's like when, when I ask people to raise their hand, if they would share with Grant Cardone, if he was in, in front of them right now, whatever their targets were like, everybody's like, yes, of course. Like I would love to have a moment with Grant to share with him these things. It's because he's likely the embodiment of a handful, if not all of somebody's goals, whether that's in health or personal relationships or friendships or wealth or business, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, I would, I would be thinking with, okay, if that person doesn't have clarity on their financial goals, that would be a problem. If they don't have clarity on the person that's managing them, their ability to help them make it easy for them to ha make more money, then that would be the second place I would look. I appreciate you as always. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. All right. I see the cursor is moving all over David. David, we're going to get you unmuted. Although I'm not sure you knew you had your hand up. I did. I did. Hey, okay. Man. All you right. You looked a little confused. I was writing and I was like, is that me? So oh. yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank Hi. you for choosing me. Um, yeah. I just wanted to uh, just say thank you for, you know, everything you guys are doing for my business. I've got my platform right here with me and it's become like my Bible for my business. And just the little, the few things I've implemented have changed everything. Wow. Uh, question is, so, you know, I'm, I'm in construction and mostly my work is subbed out to sub crews, but I've trying to build in-house crews at the same time. I want to have both options available. And so I hired a guy as a, a helper, not a lead carpenter, but more of an, a, an assistant. And I only have one lead carpenter that, that I was going to use. He was going to work with him. Well, that guy quit. Mm. So I just hired this guy. And also that guy, I, I had moved him out of a project management position into the lead carpenter position. So this new, now all of a sudden I've got this new guy and I don't have anything for him because my projects require at least two to three men on them working together. Mm -hmm. So what I did was just, I didn't want to let him go. I just hired him. He's got kids. So, um, and he seemed, he seems like a good guy. So I started, he started helping me with the projects and so far he's done really good with the few things I've given him to do. So I just, I, what I've done is I've taken the project management part and I've given him two or three things to begin to implement over the next 30 days to see if maybe he'll go in that direction. So I wanted to get your opinion on, you know, do you have any thoughts on that or what would you do in that situation? Yeah, that's exactly what I would do. I would take the, I th like I think of team members, when I take my like um, really soft side off of, out of my brain for a second and I look at our team members as like resources to be able to help our organization the soft side comes in through like getting to know people through their goals and sitting down and really like caring about them and, and ideally aligning their goals with then this other very analytical side, which is like, what is the resource and what can this person do to create value? I love project management as a way to get somebody who doesn't, I, I can't provide work for to pivot their skill sets as long as they're good at it. If it's like, and that would be my concern with you and, and him in this role is if he's not even remotely good at it, has no idea what project management is, you could still take a gamble on him knowing that you like him by 
equipping him with project management courses and different things, books, recommendations to get him up to speed quickly. And I think that you would create a long-term employee through doing that. I've done that many times over where I see somebody or we see some, something in somebody that they don't see. And so we just like help them get there really quickly. Uh, or obviously the other option is firing them. But if you have the work on the project management side, I would, I would do everything I can to lean into him being that person until a point in time which he could go back to his original role if that's what he wants to do and is in alignment with PPF, but you could find that he could make more money and he's happier and his skill set more closely aligns with project management, which would ultimately be a win-win. Definitely. And so the PPFs, I do those after he's been with me 60 days though, correct? Correct. And how long has he been with you now? A week. Okay. I would like touch base on his goals of just uh, I've done this to many team members where, you know, but from the time of the offer letter to them coming on board, the role has switched a little bit. Uh, and just like kind of take a temperature check, not doing the full PPF conversation, but doing a temperature check with him to, to understand, Hey, is this something that you would be interested in? Have you ever thought about project management? Why didn't you go down this path so that you're not just putting all of this investment into somebody? And then all of a sudden they're like, I hate this. This sucks. No, I would never want to do this long term. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. I'm going to take one more question, but before I take one more question, I'm going to like actually be really selfish here for a second and ask you guys for some feedback. If you found value in this call, I would hope that you would give me some feedback right now. So our team and myself have been working on this idea. It's a new idea for YouTube content. And I'm curious to know, well, put yes or no and be really honest, like super freaking honest. Um, this idea for YouTube content is coming behind the scenes with me and Cardone Ventures team as we go through this next break point that we're going to have of this 75 million with the target of creating a billion dollar enterprise, but like seeing meetings, seeing conversations, seeing how we're switching things and like more of the nitty gritty around process stuff and things that are breaking. So... If you are interested in this and you're saying yes, I'm in, like, I see a lot of yeses. You can absolutely say no. I would love to see some no's too. I would love to hear your ideas about what specifically would be interesting to watch in like a seven to 10 minute YouTube video. Cause I think sometimes we like talk at a camera and talk at people, but like, what is the vantage point that would be helpful for you if I was going to take like a vlog type camera and like take you behind the scenes? Like, is it just literally you watching a meeting? Is it me kicking off and telling you what we're doing and then having you see some of the meeting and then closing it? Like, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions and all the feedback would be incorporated because we're about to shoot a ton, a ton of content. So the more input you could give me, the better. All right, the team is like circling 15 times over. Mrs. Lori Raymond, could we get you unmuted? I know that's on our end, that's not on your end. Everybody, thank you, Natalie, for picking me. I will be quick because I know it's the end of the call. But you mentioned on the five things for every onboarding um, handbooks, do you require uh, as you update? As you send them out and as you update, do you require your employees to DocuSign them so you know they read the update? Great question. We do not have them sign it every time. The way we kind of get around that is in our handbook. Um, it says here is a, a link to all of our policies. And so the policies link in the handbook then takes them to this folder of all of the policies. And then in the folder, whenever we make those types of updates, we will email them the policy updates, but they're like, you know, visitor policies and dress code policies and stuff that we're not getting an annual signature on, but we're keeping track of those changes so that on an annual basis, we do have people resign it. Okay. And then uh, a follow-up on that is what types of questions do you put in your quiz? How many questions do you ask? And then I want to um, share something with you that Anissa Vance told me to share on oh. Owners Live from our yes. quarterly review. Yes. So the amount of questions, I think we have 25 questions in our uh, handbook and it's fairly 
challenging questions. They did, they aren't all just like layup questions. Uh, we do have most people get like three to four of them wrong, and then they go back and update the what they missed. The types of questions, uh, one of them would be like, what is the Cardinal Ventures mission statement? It'll also go into uh, like some non-discrimination stuff. Like the things that we know if somebody wasn't really reading it, they would likely miss. And so we don't allow our team members to drink with clients or and we don't let, allow our team members. This is why DJ and I have such a fond relationship. Uh, we don't allow our team members to do any sort of extracurricular activities with team members. And so we put that into our handbook to and then into our quiz to make sure our teams know, hey, guys, we, we're not about this. And DJ just like helped me blow a TikTok video up where we were talking about team members who got fired over going to strip clubs. So anyway, that's like the type of thing that like I'm thinking with when we're creating a quiz is just like, what do I know people could miss, but that they cannot miss because it's really important. Great. Great. Thank you. Okay. And then an Anissa told me to share this. We did this in our quarterly review, which was fabulous today. And we're doing our annual planning, but um, one of our newest hires, uh, asked in in his onboarding asked his supervisor what can i do to make a, the biggest impact here which is a great question from a new employee and so his his operations the operations manager told him if you want to be successful here and you really want to stand out we are growing so rapidly that the best thing you could do is help us build processes and document them and he just took ownership of it and is just like building processes as he goes every single day. And it's been really, really remarkable. So today in our morning meeting, I challenged the rest of the team that they need to, they need to step up and start really dialing in their processes and, and be able to be as remarkable as him. So I thought that was great. And then we also quoted Boot Boss Holly. And um, it's, it's funny because I saw Holly's remark right there. And, and, and uh, Anissa said, oh, that's so great. Where did you learn that? And I said, on an owner's life from something Boot Boss Holly said. So there you go, Boot Boss. I love that. Our, our clients sharing wins and dropping knowledge with our other client. I mean, it, this is beautiful. It's awesome. Thank you. It's good to see you now. It's so good to see you. Yeah, and guys, never forget that like it just takes one person in an environment to change the whole environment. If you don't have a very disciplined or accountable team and there's no processes, it takes one person that you need to sell to change that entire thing because when that person steps up and starts doing it, it creates pressure for everybody else. And then you're raising the bar slowly in what you're expecting of your culture. I'm seeing all of your guys' ideas. I love these ideas. I've only been able to read a handful of them, but we're gonna save the chat. I'm curious, and I probably have to ask our lawyer about this. I think I saw somebody asking about an interview. I'm wondering if we can legally record people's interviews or if we, and then post them on YouTube. Like, I feel like that might be, I might need actors. Yeah, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna hire actors. That's a little too YouTube produced. I'm really wanting it to be like this, like nitty gritty behind the scenes thing. Um, what if you role play one? I, that, that could be a good idea. No, that's why Grant made whatever it takes. I Maybe you could just take like our side of the interview, but then you couldn't hear the questions. We could have people sign releases ahead of time. I don't know. I'm willing to get creative because I'm fairly committed to, I'm very committed to figuring out how we could create like really freaking cool content that you guys want to see. That's not again, like talking heads about what we do, but like actually seeing what we do. So anyway, uh, Speaking of what we do, uh, again, one thing that I'm really proud of here at Cardo Ventures is that we do the things we say that we do. And this People Essentials program is really close to my heart. It's really close to uh, my intention for this organization, which is to be really consistent with we do what we say that we are going to do. And therefore, we teach business owners how to do those exact same things in the way that we do it. So this is happening. It's the last time this year. We do not have another one scheduled on the books. We don't know when it's going to be. People Essentials next Saturday, next Sunday in Scottsdale, Arizona, or you can attend virtually. Hit the QR code or connect with our sales team members um, or just put in the chat, hey, I'm interested. Uh, this is 
Thank you, Boot Boss Holly. Chris says the best money we ever spent go to this workshop. This is like a fan favorite. I'm just gonna be honest. Like this workshop, it's my favorite, but it sounds a little, you know, self-serving. This really is like a value pack jam full of all the good things that you need in order to understand this people equation in your business. And I like to say, if you know, you know, if you know that people are the challenge, if you know that people are the thing that's holding you back, if you know that people is the reason that you're stuck at $3 million or $2 million or a million dollars year after year, then you're like, oh my gosh, this is the thing for me. And if you don't think that you have those challenges, you might not have come up against that revenue breakpoint yet. I promise it's coming. So I would encourage you to get clear on setting the foundation now before it becomes an issue in the future. And then you have to fire people or deal with the challenges that come with not having a great culture to begin with. So with that, I appreciate each and every one of you. You guys are family to me and to Brandon and to all of the CVers on this call. We appreciate you. Guys, go out there, be great, be examples of 10X in your communities. That's the best that we can hope for is like you guys extending this message, being incredible advocates for yourself, for your goals, for the goals of the people around you so that we can do what we can in order to make this a better place. This is 10X Owners Live.